You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for February 7th, 2020. It's not safe for work. With 132% of Iowa precincts reporting and recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where our rambling, vindictive, conservative, crazy talk is locally sourced, it's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. Local. It's it's straight. It's diner to table to radio to your ear to. Oh my God, is that shit on my radio all day long? <laughs> this is where we have to begin today, Blue Gal. Yeah. Uh, just a little bit of, you know, if you're really if you're one of those people who live on the coast and we love you dearly, uh, who are just like vexed and perplexed about listening to the other side, you have to listen to the other side. You got to know everything. Dude, if you live where we lived, all you have to do is roll your window down. Mm -hmm. You have to go out of your way not to hear Rush Limbaugh blasting off of people's radios or or Sean Hannity coming out of their mouths. So please don't tell us in the middle of middle America that we have to understand Republican voters and get their language and figure out what they're doing. Because we're already a decade ahead of the rest of you. So <laughs> if you'd like to hear, listen to us and maybe take some pointers from how to deal with it, that's great. But please don't lecture us on how we have to listen to the other side because we live in the middle of the other side and it's very, very ugly. Yeah. Anyone um, that's in a blue dot in a red state knows what the yeah. other side is thinking. And uh, Drift Glass, I wanna, we're going to do some housekeeping. But before sure. we do that, I want to applaud Middle Child this week. Uh-oh. Uh, on Facebook, she put up a link to a... Petition, right? Petition, that's right. Yeah. Petition to get the name of her high school, Southeast High School, changed to Barack Obama High School, which is way overdue. Uh -huh. If it were up to the student body, it would have happened three and a half years ago. Yeah, yeah. But uh, because because of where we live and because of the uh, old white conservative uh, center of gravity in this town, mm -hmm. uh, that isn't likely to happen. Yeah. And so she put this on Facebook and uh, immediately there were some I, people that she knew who were friends of hers, but are also trolls at the same time. Yeah. Coming on and saying this, that and the other about Obama and Trump and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. And there were a couple of people who were upset by this. She just <laughs> takes it. You know, she's sure. she, you know how she was raised. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, she just pushes back and. Uh, <laughs> Finally, someone who was upset by all the fighting on Facebook said to to middle child, perhaps you'd look better if you exposed bias on both sides of the political spectrum. Yeah, there we go. That's a that's a solution to a problem that doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> Her response. I don't know where she picked up on this. Uh oh. Where did she pick up on saying something like this? Quote. I learned it from you, mom. <laughs> no, stepdad. Yeah, well, that's probably <laughs> Quote, I have no interest in following any Republicans. <laughs> Pussy grabbing doesn't interest me in the slightest, and I love immigrants. Uh-huh. Oh, Period. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. That's that's the future, boys and girls. Yeah. 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 And and the way she phrased it of, I have no interest, it, it reminds me of what you've said all along about news blog, about when you got your start. Yeah. That. Uh, the author of Newsblog didn't have any interest in debating conservatives. <laughs> no, this is, this is like this is like a fight, a, a classic. Steve Gilliard. Fight I'm, I'm remembering his name, Steve Gilliard. Yeah, yeah. And it was a post that's been reposted a million times by me. He's long since passed away. Um, he uh, he got gave me my start by kicking me out, and most of you know that story. Uh, but he was the first front pager at the at the uh, brand new Daily Co's website. Old school. He was the first yep. guy. Old, old school. He was the first guy that Marcos Melisas ever started posting, like, straight up, oh, this is this guy. We need to put this guy's voice right out front. And mm -hmm. then eventually he, he said, I got to do my own thing and started his own thing. And that's how blogs used to be. And his his premise was, I don't want to debate you. I want to enrage you. I want to drive you back into the political sewer that you came out of. I have no interest in engaging with you. You're a bigot and you're a moron and you lie all the time. Mm -hmm. Why would I waste my time trying to pretend that we're going to have a debate over anything? Mm -hmm. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that philosophy has 
kept me unemployed, but kept me in good stead with my soul for the last 15 years <laughs> yeah. or so. So, you know, I'm okay with that. And I'm glad to have passed along, do, done my part to pass it along to the next generation. Because honestly, the fights we're fighting now will sound so stupid 20 years from now. Four years from now. Yeah. I guarantee well, I you, so. 2024, so. yeah. the number of independent constitutional conservatives who never liked the tweeting. Yes, are going to just yeah. stagger you. Yep. Yeah, yep. and I predict David Brooks will write many columns about the sudden resurgence of independence. In before our, in we get our... to before we get to David Brooks, housekeeping, you're out of Twitter jail. I'm out of Twitter jail. I'd like to thank everyone from the cards and the sponge cakes and the files and uh, the good wishes and a couple of uh, donations to my legal defense fund. Because you know what, Twitter lawyers ain't cheap. Kids. <laughs> they, they, they charge by the hour, and that's Twitter hours, not normal human hours. Also, we had some sound problems last week. Yes, we, did. Uh, we used uh, we used Zencaster for a recording, and I made a mistake of using uh, a beta test that they were doing, and it messed with our sound. And no more. We are not doing that this week. So no. I hope that no. helps you know what was going on last week with our sound. We apologize for that. Finally, uh, YouTube. Uh, Tammy, our angel nerd, has been in the process of moving. And yeah. she's the one that does our YouTube page. YouTube will be back. It yes. just had to go on hiatus for a bit because uh, Tammy is just moving and she needed to do that. So we understand. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you have anything else you wanted to add on the housekeeping front? Yeah, I, I wanted to to brag a little bit uh, or sound my own horn because if I don't, who will? <laughs> um, uh, this morning, the, uh, the hashtag Pettysburg address was trending all over Twitter and people were very excited by it and wondered where it came from. Where did this come from? This is such an apt description of Donald Trump's unhinged racist rant. And let's, and let's repeat record, it. It's Pettysburg address, Pettysburg, right? Hashtag Pettysburg address. And it was, uh, let's make it all the rounds. Uh, all the kids love it. They're, they're rapping to it. They're making their music. <laughs> and, and there was a great deal of head scratching about where this genius locution came from. And I had to step in and say, uh, that was me from 2011 uh, in my post, hashtag the Pettysburg address, if you'd like to look it up. Mm. And I've used it several times since. In past podcasts, I have started our show uh, requesting that everyone out there in podcast land take a deep breath and do a deep cleansing breath. Uh, yeah. This week, if you want to do a primal scream, that is yes. okay with me. <laughs> yeah. Just wait till I get my headphones off. Yeah, okay? no, so. it's this is not the week for Zen. Okay, <laughs> this is the week no. for, uh, really, what happened to our democracy? What happened? And well, uh, I yeah. think I summed it up in the title of our what I have as a working title of our show, which is jury intimidation. Yeah, uh, Donald Trump scared the shit out of the Republican jurors, and the only one who uh, stood up against him was Mitt Romney. Right. And uh, that's what happened. So uh, you want to talk a little bit about the unlimited monarchical power now that Donald Trump allegedly yeah. is holding on to? Oh, well, he does. I mean, uh, Donald Trump now, by Republican acclamation, mm -hmm. minus one, by Republican acclamation, um, Donald Trump now, uh, in addition to being conferred with the authority to do anything he wants to do, to get himself reelected. That's what the Republican Party told him. Anything you want to do, anything you want to do is legit. And that's that's the power of a king. The kings don't stand for elections, but really tyrants don't either. That's why, you know, Saddam Hussein won with 90 percent of the vote all the time. Um, this, th we're living in that system now. And we have an Uday and Kuse living in the White House, which is convenient because now we have two idiot children who are part of the um, part of the crime syndicate. Well, three. But, yeah, well, Ivanka, yeah. Don Jr., and Eric. Yeah, Eric isn't well, living in the White House, but yeah. There's Tiffany, too, but living under the umbrella of their father's yeah. protection. Yeah. Um, and, and they're free to do whatever they want. They're, they're, they're ripping the country off. They're looting the place. They're making money off their name. They're getting Chinese patents. No one's stopping them because you don't stop the children of royalty from doing whatever the fuck they want. Uh, but he also has the authority to ignore subpoenas, uh, blow off um, criminal statutes. Uh, he can move money around wherever he wants. He can tell... Um, money that's been appropriated, you can't spend that, even though that's illegal. Right. He can take money that has been appropriated for the military and move it over to whatever the fuck he wants, because that's now legal. So, well, Congress specifically, Drift Glass, uh, green energy. He just yeah. decided, no, we're not going to. That was allocated yeah, and yeah. designated and by Congress. 
I mean, this is one of the things that has to happen is the Office of Management and Budget has to move to the house where money is appropriated so that the checks come from where the money is appropriated. This idea that the presidency gets to decide whether a check is written or not is absurd and corrupt. Well, well, then that's the point. The point is that Congress has the power of oversight, legislation, um, uh, spending, Mm -hmm. uh, how much money and goes where. And and oversight, I said, keeping track of the of the president and other other bodies and reining them in or impeaching them if they go out of line. Donald Trump has gone through and said, a Congress, no Republican Congress has said, we give up the right to do oversight. We give the, up the right to do tell you where to spend the money. We give up the right to uh, hold you accountable to the law, and we give up the give up the right to investigate anything. So he is a monarch, and Republicans are completely cool with that. So we need to sort of sit with that for a minute because. Honestly, if you're a liberal, and you know we all here are, or mostly, um, we've seen this coming for a very long time. Yeah, this is always back when Stephen Gilliard <laughs> was writing his blog. This was where we were warning the Republicans that they were headed. They didn't want to listen. The mainstream media didn't want to listen. Nobody wanted to fucking hear from the crackpot liberals that the Republican Party was a fascist party, fascist soul party. And they were heading towards an absolute dictatorship run by them under with with um, congressional decorations, um, you know, a little bit of festooning with the Bill of Rights. But we're not going to actually abide by it. We're just going to we're, we're going to treat them like ornaments, but we're not going to obey them because we don't have to. And that is where we are now. That, that's this is not the crisis is coming. The crisis is now here. And to celebrate being conferred unlimited monarchical powers by his stooges in the Republican Party. This week, Donald Trump lied his way through the State of the Union. He awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest award, civilian award available to be given to any civilian, to the worst racist thug in media, and he did it on live television. Uh, He launched a long, creepy, vindictive, Stalinist rant uh, including blaming crooked politics, politicians, dirty cops, leakers, liars, bad people. Uh, he said they're vicious and mean, vicious. These people are vicious. Adam Schiff is a horrible, vicious person. Nancy Pelosi is a horrible person. And he added for the first time on on Mike as the president, it was all bullshit. So he's just a fucking thug. And Republicans are okay with that. And he turned the National Prayer Breakfast. How do you screw up the National Prayer Breakfast? He turned it into the National Predator Breakfast. He turned it into one more venue for venting his ugly spleen and the spleen of all Republicans. This is how all Republicans think. And, you know, anyone who prays is is lying. No one believes in God. You know, that's all bullshit. That's all a crutch. Because all Donald Trump knows is narcissism, theft, ego, and rage and racism. That's it. So any idea that there's a God or or anyone believes in God or anyone has faith in anything is bullshit to him. That's just a line that you use to get stupid people to give you money. And then the Republican Party is full of stupid people who give him money and votes because he surrounds himself by fake Christians who invoke fake doctrine and tickle their, their, their ganglia with promises of terminating, of making abortion illegal across the United States, maybe throwing women in prison. That'd be fun because they don't hate, they, they don't hate women enough already. And uh, judges, we're going to we're going to stack the courts with so many prepubescent crackpot judges that we will long after we're all dead, our ideology will be alive and well and forced down the throats of the American people. That's how he celebrated being vindicated by the Republican Party. So I get to I get to talk a little bit more about the National Prayer Break. Please, please. I'm going to lean back and let Bible bitch do her thing. (laughs) Uh, well, first of all, Lawrence O'Donnell did a wonderful job Thursday night with his opening monologue, uh, which is up at Crooks and Liars, uh, talking about Donald Trump not knowing what the word or the term or the feeling or the emotion or the concept of love is. And he pointed out that Donald Trump was not disagreeing with the host or the moderator or the opening speaker of the prayer breakfast he was disagreeing with jesus christ in the bible right when he said i don't agree about loving your enemies or praying for your enemies and i don't like it when people claim to pray for me when clearly they're evil people like nancy pelosi uh he does not he is a psychopath and does not know what 
human love is. And later in the day on Thursday, during his ranting uh, victory lap, he actually pointed to Steve Scalise, who had been shot, Mm -hmm. and uh, pointed out that his wife must really love him because she was devastated in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, a lot of wives would have said, yeah, he's not doing so good. I'm going home. Right. And... (laughs) His wife would have. Donald was like, whose wife would do that? Your wife, Donald? Yes. One of your three yes, wives would do that? Definitely would. They, of, they go through his pockets they first. Would. They go through his pockets first, right. and then they bolt, because right. it, it's got to be hell living with this monster. Of course, they signed up for right. it, but still. Right. And it's a transactional thing, just like his relationship with Stormy Daniels, yeah. his relationship with evangelicals. It's all about whoredom. That's what it's about. And uh, selling it for money or selling it for transactional gain. And so he doesn't see a transaction that he can do with God that's going to make it good for him. But he's more than willing to make transactional relationships with evangelical Christians, so-called Christians, to give them all the judges they want. And they come around and, you know, while they're laying hands on, he thinks they're praying to him. Yeah. (laughs) And then he really doesn't understand prayer as Nancy Pelosi does it. And I have to admit, I'm not an expert on Catholic prayer, but I do believe in both Nancy Pelosi and Mitt Romney's sincerity when they say they believe what they believe. Yes. And uh, it was interesting to me that Adam Schiff got to Mitt Romney by invoking God and invoking your oath to God, because that clearly meant something to Mitt Romney. Yeah. And that's a very interesting story. You have in our notes something about Mitt Romney. Do you mind if I read no, that? No, no, please, please. Uh, we do not forgive or forget that Mitt Romney was the man who said no one ever asked to see my birth certificate, who begged Donald Trump for his endorsement in 2012, and who lied so often that the New York Times was forced to use the word lie for the first time to describe him. Mm-hmm. So, uh Yeah, Mitt Romney is not all of a sudden uh, elevated to sainthood in in the liberal canon. Um, And uh, Rachel Maddow had on Chuck Schumer, Chuck Schumer, you know, uh, Thursday night and said, uh, Rachel asked him, you know, do you want Mitt Romney to switch parties? And Chuck Schumer said, look. We have nothing in common with Mitt Romney's ideology. Oh my God, no. He's not oh, going to become no. a Democrat. Yeah, let's, let's not get crazy there, Rachel. Come on. Yeah, he's not going to become a Democrat, no. and we're not no. welcoming him or his ideology into our party. That's not going to happen. But he made a courageous stand, and we appreciate it, and he should be proud of himself, et cetera. Yeah. That's end of story. As with John McCain, he was willing to swallow a lot of shit to stay a Republican and willing to vote a lot of terrible things to, to stay a Republican. But man, there were like one or two issues that if you hit him weird on, he would turn on you. He would absolutely viciously. turn on viciously. And, yeah. because, and that's when you knew he was sincere. That he, right. You know, torture, torture was one of them. Absolutely not. Yeah. You know, be, because he had been tortured. And it, it's personal. It not yes, negotiable. Right. It was not something that you fuck around with. Mitt Romney is an elder in the Mormon church. His Mormon faith has absolutely defined his entire life. He really believes it. doesn't matter whether you believe it or I do. He does. And the idea that he was taking an oath before God to do justice was something he could not. Every other Republican in that room is, is a, as far as I'm concerned, a fake Christian. A fraud. A complete yep. fraud. The entire conservative evangelical movement is a fraud, is a complete fraud. It is a way to cherry pick your bigotry out of the Bible and turn it into an ideology to achieve power, which is something that, frankly, moderate Christians need to do a lot better job of because the quiet ones are being drowned out by the loud ones, and that just can't be allowed to continue. But Adam Schiff found the thing that Romney mm-hmm. could not ignore. He, that he found his torture. That's the thing Romney can't turn aside from and can't let stand at all. I did not know that the New York Times used the word lie for the first time about Romney. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't remember. I, that, um, I so stole that you. from Rick Perlstein. Um, okay. Who, well, he would remember. Yeah, he's, he's, he's the, the liberal internet research uh, assistant for <laughs> everyone. Encyclopedic mind. And he, he's doing a book on Romney yeah. now, I think. I think he? that's right. He's been doing them in order. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Bush, Bush Romney kind of thing. Yeah. Good. 
there's a, a new polling theory out, well, right, it, about whether there are even centrists out there. Yeah, there's a, well, there's a, a, a woman named Rachel, I'm going to mispronounce this, Bitecoffer. Uh, this is, a, this yeah. is an article in Politico. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, and the head, take it with a political yeah, grain a big, of salt. Big, yeah. But it's not <laughs> something that w- would be reported in Politico normally because her, her premise is everything you know about politics is wrong. There aren't really any swing voters or not enough to, to make any difference. Um, it doesn't matter who the Democratic nominee is, there's no such thing as the center. Um, the party can power can govern however it wants uh, because the results of the first midterm are going to be bad regardless. Um, and that the idea that there's this um, army of independent, sensible centrists out there uh, who, if he could just coax them out of the, you know, the trees where they live, because nobody can see them, but all the, all the, all the um, polls report on them, except the polling is all like, yes, no, or I don't care. Or I don't know, which is a stupid way to do polling. Her, her theory, which is based up based on her research and her prediction of the last midterm is there is no such thing as a swing voter or there, there aren't enough to worry about. Um, swing voters are like people who want to blow shit up and they'll go anywhere. Anyone promises to blow up the status quo, whatever the status quo happens to be. Um, or there are people who will, who don't in their mind, think of themselves as a member of a party, but will always reliably go one place or another. And the the problem with that is it completely destroys the entire infrastructure of the mainstream media. The punditocracy collapses. David Brooks is out of a job. Everyone's out there, you know, thumbing a, 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 a ride to the bean fields because they're all, they've all been fired because the whole predicate of the mainstream media is that it's the extremes on both sides, Blue Gal. That's the problem. And you can go back 15, 20 years and find people saying that over and over again, but it really kicked off after the Bush administration collapsed. That was when a whole bunch of people on the right who'd been backing Bush all the way had to find a rational, a rationalization for why they were wrong. And there was no way to rationalize how completely wrong Bill Crystal was and, and Michael Gerson was and David Frum and David Brooks and all the rest of those people. There was no excuse for what they had done. So they invented one, which was, well, the left is just as bad. Extremes on the left are just as bad. And that was something that the media wanted to hear. They've already, they were already biased in that direction, but this let them all off the hook. This let everybody who lied us into the Iraq war or enabled the liars and rolled over for them off the hook because everyone's to blame. I, but sure, I was wrong, but, you know, liberals are wrong about stuff too. So let's not talk about too much about who was to blame for what and who lied who into what war and the cost $2 trillion as of today. Let's just move on to the future. And it turns out inherent in that philosophy is there must be this big middle ground where, where a third of Americans all live. And if we just combined civility, um, not, on the, not on the right, of course, the right can you know be as lunatic as they want. But if the liberals <laughs> would just stop being mean on Twitter and we could all just embrace a grand bargain involving massive budget mm-hmm. cuts to, you know, because we have to cut the budget, Blue Gal. Um, then this vast army of centrists would come out of the woodwork and join us all, and they would save us from the extremes on both sides. And this is a theory that uh, that this woman just destroys. Said no, there's just, and she right. even refers to it as the Chuck Todd school of politics, um, which is uh, the, the Chuck Todd theory of American politics, and it's just wrong. And the thing that cracked me up is, you know, who was saying this more than a decade ago, Blue Gal? I think it was somebody named Drip Glass. Yeah, there's a whole <laughs> long post I wrote about David Brooks suddenly discovering independence r- around 2009 or 2010, right about the same time that the uh, Republicans are running for cover, trying to find a way to pretend they weren't Republicans. You know, as I said before, Germans burning their uniforms after World War II. Right. And suddenly all these people turn into independents. Suddenly. That's why we laugh on this podcast. Every time we hear another Republican going, you know, babies in cages wasn't enough. <laughs> Yeah, racism yeah. wasn't enough. The the good people on both sides, the Nazis thing wasn't enough. The the whole insulting uh, John McCain, but you know, this impeachment thing really got under my skin. So you know what I am now? I'm no longer a Republican. I'm an independent. Oh, where where can we find you a seat on some op ed page? Because man, this edgy, brilliant analysis of suddenly discovering that your Republican Party is full of Republicans deserves a seat at the big boy table. And yeah. that whole idea is so toxic and so wrong and so enabling of 
all the bad shit on the right. The right simply, uh, we've said before a thousand times, without this bullshit fantasy center, without the bullshit fantasy of both siderism, the right would collapse because suddenly the news media will be required to report the news. And the news is that one of our two major political parties is out of its fucking mind. And one of them well, and is it's now acting counter to the constitution and yeah. democracy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. openly so openly contemptuous. And you can just see people like Brian Williams struggling so hard on MSNBC not to say it's one party. So he invites some conservative Democrat on to say, you know, the problem with the Democrats is they, they need to learn to speak American. Speak American. They don't know how to, speak American. <laughs> they don't know how to go out to the coal country. You know, Hillary Clinton went out and basically wore a pantsuit and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and her butch haircut and uh, called them all a bunch of panty waists and told them, fuck your coal jobs. Why don't you go do coding? And then turned around to the left and sprayed them with perfume. That's not how you treat these people. And I'm like, but that's not at all what she did. <laughs> she, and this is what drives me batty. Is well, that, and, and that's not literally what, what uh, Brian that's Williams literally said. literally what they said. It was that <laughs> Brian she. Brian Williams said that she went out and told them to get green jobs or that right. she would provide green jobs, which he then said never materialized. Well, they didn't materialize because Donald Trump became president. Yes. Let's yes. be really clear. That's the he said, You know, Donald Trump promised a future based on coal. He did. And that's what they wanted to hear. And so that's why in Joe Manchin country. Yes. Donald Trump won by 40%. Yeah. Well, yeah, but let's get into the fact that that was a lie. Yeah, well, no, that's... No, no. Brian no. Williams cuts it off there before yeah. it is about what works politically with coal country. Well, is you lie to them, right? And, yeah. and we don't we don't expand the, the language. Hillary Clinton talked to them as adult Americans. Right. Here, your future is bleak. Your industry is doomed, which is just... A fact, and and I would like to help you and your children to a better future. Here are some alternatives. Here is some training. I'd also like to clean up the toxic rivers and uh, around your your place right. so that your children aren't born born you know, stillborn or stunted. I'd like to do right. all of those and things. clean your water supply so that the results of mountaintop removal yeah. mining don't kill you. Yes, and Donald right. Trump came in and treated them like children. He, he promised everybody a pony a and, hard hat on. and, you know, yep. and, and we're going to roll the country back to 1950 and, and back when Jim Crow was king and Cole was king and, and the inbred morons who occupy that part of the country all said, yay, I want the pony guy. Give me the pony guy. Cause he's also going to give me awesome health care at a fraction of the price two weeks after he's inaugurated, which is right. what he also promised. And yeah, I, you know what? There is something to be learned there. What Brian Williams is really saying underneath all of this is, Democrats, please understand, these voters in these states are fucking morons. You have to go in and treat them like the imbeciles that they are. So promise them anything. Promise them everything. It doesn't really matter what you say or do because they're so fucking stupid. They will vote for anybody who promises them the moon. And they'll never bother to check six months from now if the moon was ever delivered. If you go well, and talk to them like Brian a Williams will never check six right. months from now. That's the point. Oh, that's the thing. And and I don't I don't believe in denigrating voters to the extent that you do. <laughs> I think there is a lot of assumption that uh, when someone makes a promise like that, that there will be some accountability. And there was no accountability in the media. There is no accountability for what Donald Trump said two weeks ago. There, everyone's always covering the story of the day. And Donald Trump is very good at keeping the press on their toes, constantly covering what he said this well, morning. Well, that, that leads to an so, interesting question. There's something, something yeah. in our notes and someone who is in charge of right. holding politicians accountable. Exactly. <laughs> and it's the voters. Ultimately, it's yeah. the voters. If all yeah. you do to get your news is listen to Rush Limbaugh, uh, a, a Medal of Freedom winner, Rush Limbaugh. Medal of Freedom, and, Presidential and, Medal of presidential, Freedom winner. Yeah. And Sean Hannity, if all you do to get information about the world and, and making decisions about your future and your children's future is to let Sean Hannity take a shit in your skull every day for 20 years, then that's on you. Because you yeah. can change the channel anytime you want. And It is your some, right to at, change the channel. Yeah. At some point, you have to say either these voters are stupid children who cannot be trusted with power and cannot be trusted to vote in their own interest because they have no idea what the hell they're doing, or they are adults who are responsible for the consequences of their own actions. You can't yeah. have it both ways. So yeah. if 
and and the the problem I have with with that um, construction, or what amuses me, I should say, that's not fair, is I do listen to a conservative podcast, uh, especially like something like The Bulwark. Mm-hmm. And I hear this absolutely dissociative conversation about um, how, yeah, the Republican Party is really bad. And we, we, this specific episode, we love Rick Wilson. We want to braid Rick Wilson's hair and bear his children. He's great. But y- you can't really blame the voters for this stuff. It's just wrong to blame the that's voters. That's a rule. Like, that's, a, that's another ironclad rule of yeah. Beltway Media. Yeah. Don't well, blame the voters. Don't blame yeah. the people who walked into a polling place and chose the fascist. What? Because those there. who stayed home. Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing, right? Well, the ones who stayed home elected by default, but people who walked into the polling place and mm-hmm. voted for this raging racist asshole on purpose, this is on them. This yeah. is their fault. They did this to us. And the idea that the, the people who are even the most never Trumpy of the never Trumpers, like, well, yeah, Congress is bad. Donald Trump is just shithead. Just you just can't blame the voters because the voters are also the consumers, right? And right. you can't go around blaming people one day and expect them to buy you reverse mortgages and dick pills the next day. So let's mm-hmm. not talk about. And that's where the conversation collapses, because if we are a representative democracy, then the voters are responsible for the choices they make, and the choice they have made on the right for the last forty years have been catastrophic, and there's no way around. Holding Republicans, our neighbors, our, our, the people in the, the church pew next to you, the people you work with, they are the ones who, who built this beast. They're the ones who chose this. And there's no way around holding them responsible except for the fact the entire Beltway media is constructed around never holding people responsible for the shit they do. Because once you start doing that, then you start asking really difficult questions about why Hugh Hewitt is on NBC. <laughs> Yeah. And why Chuck Todd he even has a job. And nobody wants to have that conversation. So it's a conversation we never have. So accountability I, is never is never meted out. And I'm I also wanted to point out that those who think, well, Fox News is on basic cable, which Rudy right. Giuliani in New York arranged, by the way. Yes. Uh and and that leaves it as an option for people that may not have other options. The fact is that after this ties us back to Mitt Romney, yeah. when Mitt Romney lost after three solid days of Fox News promising viewers yeah. that Mitt Romney was going to win in a landslide in 2012, Fox News viewers turned them off. Mm-hmm. Fox News viewers, their ratings dropped significantly. Yep. Donald Trump's State of the Union address had very low ratings, dropped 12 percent from the year before. People didn't watch it. And I want to get into, I know this is sort of turning our conversation on a right angle, but the the freak out that people have about the Iowa caucus turnout and how the turnout was on par with 2016. Yeah. You know, I, I personally, maybe I'm painting too rosy a picture here, but my sense is that there's a lot of Iowans, number one, who don't want to spend two hours in a gymnasium anymore right. choosing the nominee. And this year, uh, don't have a preference. They're happy with any of them. And so they're going to leave it to the people that want to spend two and a half hours in a gymnasium for a specific candidate. Yeah. And they don't have to go because it's not going to be Donald Trump <laughs> coming out of the result of a Democratic caucus in Iowa. They can stay home and leave it to people who are passionate about one candidate or Absolutely. another. Well, I mean, it, you know, so, that's, that is ab- that yeah. is a rational calculation. Why do I waste hours and hours and hours on a cold night when any one of these people are right. okay with me? You know? Yeah. And are far better than Trump. And I'll vote for whichever one turns out yeah. to be the nominee. And that's your opinion. And I, you know, I am have feelings about one candidate over another. I'm new, officially neutral, but... Uh, as you know, all three kids are pretty much on the yes. Warren bandwagon at this point. Um, although Middlechild also said that she may yeah. vote for Bernie. So that and she was a big Bernie person and she, in 2016. And she can vote so. first time this year. And we have, you know, we have yeah. um, pretty so. well weathered Bernie cups here, Bernie t-shirts or the laundry. You know, Bernie <laughs> we do from 2016. You know, is, we believe yeah. me, we yeah. do not cast them out in the cold for their political opinions. We encourage them to have their own minds and 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 debate with us in a friendly way and talk about issues. And they can make up their own mind. 
And you and I were enthusiastic Hillary voters yes. in the general election. And here's the thing. Yeah. Most, so, I, I do want to emphasize this, most Bernie supporters I know, most Bernie supporters who are in the Iowa, Iowa caucuses, according to what I've read and heard, are perfectly wonderful people. Mm -hmm. They're delightful people. They're very enthusiastic. They're very passionate. It, it is, they're not the problem. There is a small minority who are very, very loud, who make it sound as though it's, it's either our way or we'll burn this fucker down. And some of those yeah. are bots. I, I'm absolutely convinced. And, and I, that was one statistic that came out of Iowa that I found fascinating, which w it was under 18% of Iowa caucus goers who get their yeah. news from Twitter. So we have to remember, those of us that are on Twitter many, many yes. hours a day need to remember that, you know, one out of five of us yeah. is not on Twitter. Uh, and I notice that when I'm writing up things in Crooks and Liars, if I put Twitter in the title, it gets really good traffic because there's a whole bunch of people not on Twitter who want to know yeah, what, what this is about and what the conversation is. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, speaking <laughs> of Twitter and accountability, um, Yes. I, I pose the question, who's in charge of, of holding people accountable? Uh, who's in charge of holding David right. Brooks accountable? Twitter is. Twitter's Twitter in is. Of that. Now, <laughs> Twi and Twitter's doing a very good job of holding Twitter, David Brooks Twitter, accountable, Twitter I have to ratio say. ratio <laughs> David Brooks to the outer orbit of Jupiter. Um, and, here's, and here's what makes me <laughs> both like happy and sad or smile and frown. Um, I've been writing about David Brooks for 15 years. And my, my critique, mm -hmm. uh, I try to choose different words each time because I'm a writer and I like to do a variety of things. But my critique is basically the same. It's like this guy is completely out of his depth. He lies constantly. He exaggerates. He makes up a lot of bullshit about a lot of stuff he has no idea about. He never leaves his fucking penthouse. And he writes a wig fan, a fan fiction to please the his employers and the rich people he knows. He makes up an imaginary middle America. He makes up imaginary liberals. Um, and he, that's the America that his small group of rich inbred in, uh, shut-ins want to believe in. And so that's what he tells them. And it, it always blows up in his face. And he always looks like an idiot. But no one in his profession ever calls him on it. They continue to treat him with great respect. He continues to make a shitload of money. This has been going on for decades. This is not a one-off. This is a cons this is truly is a conspiracy. There's no reason for this schmuck to be have uh, have a keyboard in front of him and a paycheck on the way, other than the Schultzberger family is paying off some God knows what debt to whoever, because that's the only explanation I can have. And when you are this bad, <laughs> mind you, he has... Well, and the, talk about yeah. the tweet that well, was this week. because David that's... Brooks has an entire research staff that he can call on. He has the New York Times in his back. <laughs> and today, uh, not today, I apologize, a couple of days ago, David Brooks said on Twitter, because, you know, He's been told, I'm sure, you got to get that on social media, David. You can't hide away from commenters. This is part of the job now. Fine, I'll do it. So instead of spending the past three years on Mueller and impeachment, suppose Trump opponents had spent the time on an infrastructure bill or early childhood education. <laughs> more good would have been done. I Trump opponents had spent more time on passing bills to help I the American people. I can't think of a stupider thing David Brooks has ever said in, in under 280 characters in all thing. the years I've been covering him. It, it is it's such a manifestly dumb, blind, clueless fucking take. It it is so clear. This is and this is pure. Does he not know that the Republicans held the House he for the first care. two years remember, of Trump's? Remember what? Remember no fair remembering <laughs> stuff, blue gal. That's rule number one as a I as know. a beltway pundit, yeah. you're gonna fail because it's not fair remembering things that happened in the past. So yeah, of course, there are three hundred yeah. bills sitting on Mitch McConnell's desk right now, among them a whole bunch of cool, good shit that could be passed. The reason they're not being passed is because Republican Mitch McConnell kills them, not both sides, not Trump's opponents. And for two years out of the last three, David Brooks's Republican Party has controlled every branch of government. They could have done anything they wanted. They could have passed the I, I forget what I, I, I said. It was in my little post there. I'm sure it was very clever and, and very unpleasant. Um, every MAGA meathead gets a free pony bill. You know, at, what are they, they yeah. get Child yeah. education, infrastructure, drugs, whatever you want. Whatever you want. You control everything. And they didn't do any of it. Well, and, and the women of the House who chanted yeah. HR3 at the president, the so-called yeah. president, when he said, I'm going to do something about prescription drug prices. I got to do something about it. And like, there's a bill. It's just already sign. passed. Just it's on Mitch McConnell's desk. HR3, just tell him to pass it and sign it. It's but all that, done. That he, reality, yeah. which is obvious and clear and self-evident, and you can't 
and, and it, it, there's no way to avoid looking at it, is destructive yeah. to David Brooks's creepy little fantasy about who the real villains are, which is both sides. Well, and if if only if you know we have to we have to if, in more sorrow than anger we have to say how sad it is that Trump's opponents didn't focus on helping the American sad. people. It's very sad. Really, maybe in humility they could go ahead and, and do that and, now. And right, to my that's... delight, everyone dragged David Brooks over this. People with blue checks, people without blue checks, people who never heard of David Brooks, people who like, who the fuck is this guy? And where the hell is, what rock has he been living under? My own little edition, if you want to go looking for it on the internet, is entitled David Brooks Castigates President Hillary, House Speaker Nancy, and Senate Majority Chuck for Squandering Their Unlimited Political Power. Squandering, they, really. Okay. So sad. Or this is another episode of Why Won't Obama Lead? Why won't Obama lead? And, and but <laughs> and this is I know this bores people. I, I I get that. But the reason this is my go to idiot is because he is such a perfect distillation of everything that's wrong with the media. He is incompetent. He lies. He's respected by his peers. He makes a shitload of money. He has a job where he can't be fired from. And he never, ever has to face his critics. Everything that's wrong with the media is summed up in this one bozo who will have a job until the end of time because the Schulzberger family wants it that way. There's no other reason for it. There's no other explanation for it. That's the way things are. Uh, we got the New Yorker this morning Yes, in the mail. Yes. Uh, the February 10th issue. And yes. yeah, I, I fit the demographic. <laughs> okay. I admit yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm overeducated, Becky. I totally get that. It was between um, the Brandeis and Harvard magazines, right? I mean, it's right. It's America. right between the Brandeis and Harvard magazines and the nation and uh, sojourners. And yeah, so, but this article that uh, is online, so you can go read it online uh, about Donald Trump followers and supporters at the Daytona International Speedway 200 miles north of Mar-a-Lago. Yeah. And I do recommend reading this, but the paragraph, the owner of an orange RV with a Confederate flag decal on its bumper. He explained the sticker's provenance. Quote, it started with the Civil War or whatever. <laughs> just, sit with that just for a minute. How beautiful. Yeah, it started with the Civil War or whatever. Uh -huh. The North against the South. And then there was slavery involved. I don't know the exact whole story. They've turned it into a racist thing. Unquote. I, I want that. I want that needle pointed into a pillow. I'm asking for that right now so I can have it. My Christmas. I really, I so want that. Just the last line is so perfect. It's so absolutely perfect. I just don't, I have nothing to add. It's flawless. Yep. Go read the whole thing because they're, the arguments that they make that, well, you know, white Englishmen were the first slaves. Sure, sure. <laughs> and England took away their guns and that's why they came to America. Uh -huh. Well, you know. So they've got a sense of history that's really uh, unique. Yeah. <laughs> Let me say that. After, uh, the, after the Babylonians drove the, uh, the, the Egyptians to America by taking away their guns. Yeah, they, they don't really know anything. They just know a bunch of garbled um, shit that they learned from grandpa and from bumper stickers and from. But they vote. And they vote. Um, but this is why this idea that if we just crafted our message about healthcare a little bit better, maybe they would break through. No, nothing's going to break through to these people. And there's no mm -hmm. magic pot of undecideds and independents out there who will make up for these dopes if we just got those people. The only no, thing that's time it's time to focus on turnout, turnout and yeah. that's exactly. turnout in November, yeah. registration, voter registration, postcards to voters, and uh, keep going. Well, which is why I, I spent last night phone banking for Betsy Dirksen Lottery. You did, yeah. yeah. And I will continue to do. And so. I did postcards to yeah. voters this week, yeah. so uh, keep it up. And uh, Drift Glass, we want to talk for a moment about uh, Iowa caucus kerfuffle. We do. Um, my whole attitude toward that is fuck that noise, yeah. but, uh, you wrote something here that I think is a good reminder. Oh. Um, the reason the democratic primaries are so fractious is that so much is riding on them. 
and because we have only one viable political party left. So every screw up becomes a conspiracy and every slight becomes the last goddamn straw. The process is also full of trolls and zealots whose agenda is chaos and infighting. And don't forget there are bots in there too. Yeah. Uh, I also want to remind everyone, I've said this before, the office of chairman of the Democratic Party is the most thankless job in the universe. There, the only purpose of it is to raise money on mm-hmm. the national level yep. and get blamed for everything. Right. If anyone is presenting me with what we really need to focus on is Tom getting rid of Tom Perez, I say, again, fuck that noise. Yeah. Uh, his, his job is not as important as your job, your job out there getting the vote out. Well, that, that leads us to our news roundup rather effortlessly. Um, <laughs> Good. Because uh, the first thing I would like to note is that the Iowa primary phone app is the sex panther of phone apps because, <laughs> you know, 60% of the time it works every time. And yeah, and it is that, that's that's from Ron Burgundy. That is Anchorman, <laughs> Ron Burgundy, Sex Panther Cologne, and I I believe that's just gasoline. Um, yeah. but the only thing dumber and more convoluted than the Iowa primary uh, uh, caucus process, which was made even more complicated this year, and the phone app debacle, are the people who insist that the Iowa primary debacle is part of some very big conspiracy. Because if it is, it's the dumbest conspiracy I've ever heard of. It didn't benefit it, anybody. It, 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 well, it, it hurt Bernie Sanders and it hurt Joe Biden. I'm like, yeah. this is, yeah. why would why would anyone cook up a conspiracy to hurt the front runner of the corporatist wing of the Democratic Party? Um, why would anyone spend Well, a- Drift Glass, there's a couple of things I got to add yeah. to that, though. One is, um, Joe Biden is at home in Delaware. That's just. Right I now. Know. I don't understand that at all. I, I always, uh, well, he went home. Yeah. You, you and I have always had the sneaking suspicion that he did not want to run for president. I, I don't get it. I, yeah. he, tonight's the debate in New Hampshire. I know. I know. It is four days until the New Hampshire primary, and he's in Delaware. He's not in. If he was in South Carolina, I would go, OK, right. he's spreading out his yeah. appearances. He's he went to Nevada or whatever. He's in Delaware. Mm-hmm. There isn't any upcoming primary in Delaware. Yeah, well. He just went to his house because debate prep. Yeah, that, and, you know, we'll see tonight. Um, yeah. there, there are still going to be plenty of people on the stage. There's still plenty of things to choose from. The, 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 the Democratic Party popsicle and taco truck is still full of lovely variety of flavors and, and, and crunchies. For well, choosing. mostly white. Yeah, but, well, that's, that you is know, yeah. damn true and damn unpleasant. Um, but the, um, the idea that, that anyone would spend millions of dollars to create a phone app that would just – goof things up enough to make people confused and angry um in iowa well that's the other thing my prediction for iowa my prediction for iowa was that there would be four who would emerge and they would all be viable and they would all be eh, you know 20 to 15 or you know 21 23 whatever they would all be in this percentage rate of under a quarter of the votes but still high enough to be going into new hampshire not limping And that was my prediction. <laughs> and, and you know what? There, and it ha- that's what happened. The, the people who, who are running Betsy Dirksen's campaign, the, the people yes. I, I deal with, they are all all wired in with everyone who works in Iowa. And the people who yeah, worked in Iowa right. who gave up a year of their life, who gave up, you know, regular steady yes. diet, who knocked doors, who killed themselves to do this right. thing and to watch it just be fumbled on the one yard line because of fuck ups right. and, and phone app. I feel bad and for those every folks. Reason to be pissed off. This is the thing. Bernie Sanders has every reason to be furious at them. And Bernie Sanders has been a gentleman and has been restrained in his, in his pros. And I, I think Bernie. And so has so Warren, Warren. Yeah. And, you know, and, and Warren has a lot to be pissed yeah. about as well because MSNBC did not run her speech live, yeah, did not tr- even attempt to get her speech up as soon as, I mean, that she, she and Biden were speaking at the same time. I get that. You have a problem there. But the minute Biden is done, you cue it up and you run it. And they didn't on MSNBC. They just waited and waited and waited. And uh, that was wrong. Uh, I got to say, Warren's internet team reminds me of Obama's because they had her speech on Twitter, 
the minute it was over. I mean, within moments. So that tells me they're on it. Uh, and that that's important. Put it this way. Uh, Elizabeth Warren was very presidential after the Iowa fuck up. Uh, Joe Biden was Joe Biden. Bernie Sanders was a gentleman. And, and here's the thing. Pete Buttigieg did what, in a way, you want a campaign to do when faced with absolute uncertainty and chaos. Do something decisive. Do something now. Whatever it is, just do something. Take an action. Don't stand there on the sidelines wondering what you should do. And he saw a jump ball with no referees. And he grabbed it and ran mm-hmm. with it. Might have been the wrong mm-hmm. thing to do. Might have hurt him in the long run. But at least it was, God damn it, he made a decision. And and he... Well, so did Amy Klobuchar. Yeah, oh, yeah. She made a decision as no, well. I, she went on TV, I, you know, and took some free media time I, and gave a very good speech. Yeah, so, I'm quite happy with the way most of the candidates have comported themselves in, in the face of this most of the time. So on to New Hampshire, and let's put this behind us. And and when they arrive at New Hampshire, um, you will find that uh, Trump and his adult sons are being super helpful uh, by claiming <laughs> that the Iowa Democratic caucuses were rigged and calling them an unmitigated disaster. You know what? Go tend to your own racist shitpile party and let Democrats run the Democratic Party. And we'll just see who, who comes out on top in November. How's that? You stick to your knitting. Oh, man. And we'll stick to ours. They are something else. So don't say knitting. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. Don't say that. Uh, no, they they are uh, being themselves and showing who they are, aren't they? The Trump crime syndicate is also urging Republican voters to vote for Bernie Sanders in the South Carolina primary. It used to be, you know, Nixon did his rat fucking yeah. in right. private and and hit it and and basically, you know, gave away the ghost on Watergate to protect the rat fucking operations they had yeah. elsewhere. And uh, Donald Trump's just doing it out yeah. in the open. And and you know who and he inherited from a, a presidential medal award winner, a freedom winner, uh, Rush Limbaugh with Operation Chaos. Oh yeah, the Trump administration declares that South Carolina foster agencies can reject gays and Jews as foster parents. The federal government will allow Miracle Hill and other federally funded foster agencies in the state to deny services to same-sex and non-Christian couples. That hurts children, by the way. Yeah, it hurts children. It hurts families. It is distinctly un-American. And of course they're doing it because these are America's enemies. Uh, Mike Pence, you might have heard him. He's the vice president. Uh, He this week defended maxing out the national credit card to get his boss, who I remind you, ran a casino into the ground and declared bankruptcy four times, re-elected. Vice President Mike Pence defended deficit expansion under Trump as necessary for economic growth or... And again, I'm violating the rules about not remembering things, Blue Gal. To quote Dick Cheney, Reagan proved deficits don't matter. Let's make sure we keep a video of that. Sharpen. And set it aside. Absolutely. God bless the Freedom of Information Act. According to emails and internal Pentagon documents, Trump's July 18th hold on Ukraine military aid stunned Pentagon officials working to expedite delivery of Javelin anti-tank missiles to Ukraine. According to emails released in response to the Freedom of Information Act request, officials at NOAA were sick and flabbergasted about Trump's inaccurate statements, his altered forecast map, and tweets about Hurricane Dorian in September. Yeah. Uh, Bill Barr, he's the attorney general, is putting a tight leash on any future investigation into Trump's crimes and treason. Attorney General William Barr issued new restrictions on investigations into politically sensitive individuals or entities including a requirement that he approve any inquiry into a presidential candidate or campaign. The White House threatened to veto nearly $4.7 billion in emergency aid package to Puerto Rico. This is from Joan Walsh at The Nation, friend of the pod, Joan Walsh. Uh, The erasure of Elizabeth Warren continues. The media is ignoring that Warren beat Joe Biden, the Democratic frontrunner, and outperformed her final polling. Again. Yeah, that's a good article to read. And uh, Joe Scarborough's show this morning uh, treated Elizabeth Warren like a little girl. Yeah, it, was, it was so sexy. It was, you know, she does so good at the selfies. She, she's and, more likable. But she's not very likable, is she? No, well, you know, some people don't think she's likable. and But, you know, she just, gosh darn it, she's so good at shaking hands and doing the selfies. Bless her Bless heart. Her heart. Yeah, it was like, it was almost that yeah. bad. Uh not recognizing that retail politics, especially in small states like Iowa and New Hampshire, is kind of important. And if a man was doing that, yeah. 
Can you imagine what they would have yeah. said? All right. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security temporarily blocked 175,000 New York State residents from enrolling in the Trusted Traveler Program, including global entry, in retaliation for a state law that limits immigration agents' access to state driver's license data. Yeah. The revenge and retaliation is now going to begin in earnest. The, mm -hmm. uh, just a reminder, the estimated cost of George Bush's Iraqi debacle now stands at $2 trillion. The Interior Department finalized plans to permit drilling, mining, and grazing in areas of southern Utah that were previously protected as two national monuments. I wonder if that's an FU to Mitt Romney. I don't know. I have no proof, but, but why wouldn't it be? Um, and last but not least, we'd like to read uh, an email from one of our uh, listeners who wrote us just today saying, uh, this is from Susan, no last name. Uh, Drift Glass and Blue Gal, it has been such a rough week with the acquittal and the obnoxious state of the union. Tuesday night, I was really depressed about everything. But the one thing I was looking forward to and would help me through is Friday evening when I could listen to your podcast, exclamation point. After Sarah Palin did her nominee acceptance speech with McCain, you created a video to help us. And I know today's podcast will help. Thank you. You're welcome, Susan. It was a bad You're week welcome. for a lot of and, us. And it was a bad week for me. I had... Uh... I have an experience with depression. Let me just put it that way. Yeah. And uh, my family, there's family history of depression. It's, uh, that's all I need to say about that. But I actually spoke to a medical professional about it this week. It is okay to do that. Yeah. I recommend it. If you are feeling hopeless, if you are, I mean, I have enough experience with depression that I know the difference between uh, being stressed out by a you know, being instigated into being stressed out or seeing something and being sad about it, that is different from losing hope and losing interest in things that you'd normally enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you know, Drift Glass, I had a moment this week where yeah. nothing was making me feel better. Yes. And uh, where I wasn't, and, and here's, here's the kicker, kids, knitting. I wasn't enjoying knitting. And that is like a flame thrown in yeah. the air. <laughs> yeah. Watch out. She needs to do something. So I did. Uh, I had an appointment already with a doctor this week and I brought it up. Mm -hmm. And fortunately, these days, when you go in for your annual physical, whatever it is, uh, they usually have questionnaires, at least in Illinois, to ask you, are you, you know, have you had a depressed, depressed moment? Mm -hmm. Are you facing losing interest in enjoyable activities? Are you feeling hopeless? Are you losing sleep? Are you, and it asks you those kind of questions, but I was prepared already to talk to a doctor about it. And uh, I, if you, if this is getting the better of you and something that you love to do, you're not enjoying anymore, or if your sleep is disrupted or you're not able to function at work or whatever it is, mm -hmm. it is okay to reach out to a doctor and talk to them about it. It is recommended to um, reach out to a doctor. A, and, and yeah. you should. Yeah. And I did. And I hope I'm an example. Uh, it's something that sometimes you just need to do. And to, this week was particularly stressful and triggering. Uh, we didn't talk about Nancy Pelosi tearing up the State of the Union address, uh, her photocopy of the State of the Union address. Come on. Um, but I was uh, reminded that a man who lies at you constantly is an abuser. Yes. And that's what's going on. We are being abused. Yes, every it's day. It's very triggering for a lot of us yep. to see that. And so her ripping that up for me was a statement that, no, I'm not going to take this. I'm not going to take you ripping up the Constitution and pretending that this is okay. It's not okay. Uh, so that's that's that. Well, and uh, let me bring yeah. that full circle, which is... Mm -hmm. Access to health care professionals right. for everyone, for everything, is vitally important to keeping you healthy and um, moving forward and keeping our society from losing its mind, from mm -hmm. breaking down, from getting physically ill or mentally ill and being unable to function. The idea that it would be a luxury if you're facing crippling depression or any other problem that you have to f sit down and figure out if you want to go bankrupt, if you want to risk, you know, losing your home, um, or you want to risk um, uh, uh, your your kid's meal, 
for the price of going to see a doctor because you have an actual thing that needs needs to be is unacceptable. And here's the thing. Every Democratic candidate believes this. Mm -hmm. It is a matter of, do you think we should incrementally tinker, we should make some changes, or we need to have one big change, one shot, one thing over the course of three or four years. But every single Democrat believes that people who are in need of medical attention, people should have it immediately and for, for no or low cost. And your ongoing health should be factored into the healthcare system. And, and health care is a human right. Health care is goddamn right. It's a human right. Hey, each week we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Princess Pillow. Yeah, she's she's zen. She's relaxed. She's chill. Princess Pillow's owner writes, greetings from Princess Pillow of New Orleans, Louisiana. She is enjoying a much-deserved victory after working hard canvassing and texting neighbors to get out the vote for John Bell Edwards. She has no patience for rich, racist weirdos who try to buy their way into the governor's mansion. And, of course, she only eats freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store dreck, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Princess Pillow at our Facebook page or website. She is on a pillow and she looks just wonderful. And you can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job and a labor of love. And we so appreciate you going over to proleftpod.com and finding a way to donate to the show that that you like and and whether it's merch or uh, buy me a coffee or paypal or whatever you want to do uh we appreciate so much uh a donation especially during election year when there's a lot of people that want your money we appreciate it so much thank you approximately one percent of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution and you can too See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. Thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Driftglass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties have torn our podcast notes in half, so we have actually no idea what the Internet Kitties are up to. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, lovey dovey. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.